Good evening. It's wonderful to be with you again. Um, back for um, our once a month evening prayer on uh, on the first the first Sunday of the month. I can't believe we're in May already. What I'm going to offer you this morning um, is a short affirmation, uh, followed by a, a reflection of um, an experience I had in my um, parish nursing ministry at a recent um, conference, parish nursing ministries uh, conference that I attended, uh, which uh, which I hope uh, I hope you enjoy. I look forward to hearing any feedback here. You're you're happy to offer. But let us be quiet for a moment as we come before God. Lord, we thank you for the example of leadership given to us by your son, Jesus Christ. In our waking and arising, Lord, be the first thought to enter our head. In our eating and drinking, Lord, be the first thought that enters our head. In our walking and our journeying, Lord, be the first thought to enter our head. In our working and serving, Lord, be the first thought to enter our head. In our rejoicing and in our sorrow, Lord, be the first thought to enter our head. In our resting and our sleeping, Lord, be the first thought to enter our head. I'm now going to, to offer you a short reflection from my experience in parish nursing ministry. A few weeks ago, I attended and participated in the Parish Nursing Ministries UK Annual International Symposium in Alverton in Derbyshire. And this was the first opportunity available to meet face to face for over two years with other parish nurses and parish nursing service leads. And a number of core speakers attended and supporters of parish nursing ministry which was wonderful, including actually um, Sir Nigel Crisp, who afforded us a very, very thought provoking presentation relating to health and well-being. But also a number of trustees of Parish Nursing Ministries UK there. And it was a really wonderful and very spiritually uplifting few days. Now, one of the trustees is Fiona Castle. And Fiona Castle um, is a a well, beautiful woman. I can't think of any other way to describe her. And um, and she's she's actually the um, the widow of Roy Castle, who was the jazz trumpeter and TV personality, who um, very importantly um, and you know, very very happy memories for many. Um, at Easter nineteen eighty, um, she launched one of the Fellowship of Float uh, boats the one called Sandling. And very sadly, um, Roy Castle died um, shortly after that of passive smoking. Um, but his legacy certainly lives on and, uh, and a huge amount of work has been done um, in relation to the impact of passive smoking uh, you know, around public health and uh, and where people can and cannot smoke and understanding the impact of smoking um, to health and uh, has really made a significant difference to people's lives and saved thousands of lives um, uh, as a consequence 
with all the effort that's been made since then. I was really fortunate to find myself traveling back with Fiona um, by train. And um, I found out you know, from just our discussions that uh, Fiona had written a book um, and it's a beautiful book. I'll just show you quickly. It's actually called B. Can you see that? Um, let me just make sure I think I might have it the, the wrong way around for you. B, there we are. Absolutely beautiful book. And you know, there's some people you meet and they are just particularly memorable and uplifting and they make you think more deeply about God and about life and they inspire us in many ways well Fiona Castle is certainly one of them uh, and she's now 82 years old and uh, and you know has uh, and this book is is, is really powerful um, it affords us 365 devotions of godly wisdom to live by one for each day of the year and each with a quote from the Bible and a prayer point. And what I'm going to do is just quickly read you um, day 111, which is entitled Be Trusting. And it encourages us as Christians to put our trust in Jesus, Jesus alone, before any human being. And this is the piece. Jesus came into the world to save sinners. He knew what the humans were like. He was discerning right from the start, aware that his purpose was to show us a different way, a different way to live. He loved us enough to die for us in order that we could receive new life in him, amazing grace. Even though we have discovered that transformation through him, we are not perfect. And as the verse says, he knows what we're really like. But he's never disappointed or bitter because he did not put his trust in any person, only in God. If we trust in people more than we trust in God, we will end up despairing because no human can be perfect. So let us not trust anything fully, but to trust the grace of God. To trust the grace of God. And in this piece, I don't think for a minute that Fiona is discouraging us from forming healthy, meaningful relationships and faithful relationships with people in many different ways and in many situations, not at all. In fact, what is being said is that our love of God in our Saviour Jesus Christ must come first, that the love of God must be our priority. And I don't know about you, this can be quite difficult sometimes, that sometimes in our lives, this truth can be more difficult than others. And I think what's important is, is for us to talk to each other and work together and pray together, and maintain friendships together. Now, I'm going to read from John 2, 24 to 25, and this is the New Living Translation. And John tells us that Jesus didn't trust them because he knew all people. He knew all about people. No one needed to tell him about human nature for he knew what was in each person's heart.
He knew what was in each person's heart. So let us, trusting God first and foremost, and let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, help us always to put our trust in you before any human being, before anyone else. Lord, remind us that you are the only one in whom we can totally trust. We ask this in your name, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So with that thought in mind, let us be quiet for a moment as we come before God this evening. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Blessed are you, sovereign God. To you be praise and glory forever. From the deep waters of death, you brought your people to new birth by raising your son to life and triumph. Through him, dark death has been destroyed and radiant life is everywhere restored. As you call us out of darkness into his marvellous light, may our lives reflect his glory and our lips repeat the endless song. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. Our first scripture reading this evening is taken from Isaiah 38, verses 9 to 20. A writing of King Hezekiah of Judah, after he had been sick and had recovered from his sickness, I said, in the noontide of my days, I must depart. I am consigned to the gates of Sheol for the rest of my years. I said, I shall not see the Lord. In the land of the living, I shall look upon mortals no more. Among the inhabitants of the world, my dwelling is plucked up and removed from me like a shepherd's tent, like a weaver I have rolled up my life. He cuts me off from the loom. From day to night, you bring me to an end. I cry for help until morning. Like a lion, he breaks all my bones. From day to night, you bring me to an end. Like a swallow or a crane, I clamour. I moan like a dove. My eyes are weary with looking upwards. Oh Lord, I am oppressed. Be my security. But what can I say? For he has spoken to me, and he himself has done it. For my sleep has fled because of the bitterness of my soul. O oh Lord, by these things people live, and in all these is the life of my spirit. O oh, restore me to health, and make me live. Surely it was for my welfare that I had great bitterness, that you have held back my life from the pit of destruction, that you have cast all my sins behind your back. For Sheol cannot thank you, death cannot praise you. Those who go down to the pit cannot hope for your faithfulness. The living, the living, they thank you, as I do this day. Fathers make known to children your faithfulness. The Lord will save me. 
and we will sing to stringed instruments all the days of our lives in the house of the Lord. To the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second scripture reading this evening is taken from John 11. Seventeen to twenty six and twenty seven to forty four. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again, Martha said to him. I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, the teacher is here and he's calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house consoling her saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been there, my brother, would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed. In spirit and deeply moved, he said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see now he loved him. See how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you? But if you believed, you would see the glory of God. So they took away the stone and Jesus looked upwards and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus! come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to him, unbind him, said to them, unbind him and let him go. Unbind him and let him go. For the word of the Lord, thanks be to God. I'm now going to offer us some evening prayers. 
and let us be quiet for a moment as we come before God for our intercessions. On the third Sunday of Easter. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have called us to follow in the way of your risen Son and to care for others with acts of love. As we seek to be true friends to all, we pray for our families, our friends and our neighbours, Lord, especially those experiencing difficulties and pain and suffering at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remember this evening those who are sick, sad or lonely, and those who are brave and are patient when things go wrong. We pray that they may be aware of your comforting presence, Lord, and know that in your hands they are safe and loved. Lord, through the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray for those who have departed this life and ask you, through your loving kindness, to have mercy on their souls. Lord, we pray too for those who are bereaved. We have a moment's silence as we think of those close to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of peace and justice, our hearts and minds are focused on the Ukraine and its people and the suffering they are enduring, Lord. We thank you for all nations and their people who have responded so wonderfully and so generously. And we pray for the brave men and women who have stayed to defend their country, their freedom and their national identity, Lord. Lord, through the words of the Archbishop of Canterbury and the Archbishop of York, we offer you the prayer for Ukraine. We pray for Ukraine today. We pray for peace and the laying down of weapons. Lord, we pray for all those who fear for tomorrow, that your spirit of comfort would, would draw near to them. We pray for those with power over war and peace, for wisdom, discernment and compassion to guide their decisions. And above all, Lord, we pray for all your precious children at risk and in fear, that you would hold and protect them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray that you may help us to be an example to others. Show us the practical steps we need to make these changes. Changes in the way we do things, in all that we do in our lives, Lord. And Lord, we pray for our ministry team, especially for Reverend Tracy priest in charge of all our seven parishes. And let us share, Lord, our mission prayer together, praising Jesus for all he has done, for the Holy Spirit at work in our lives. We thank you that there is a stronger desire to grow your church than ever, Lord, for new things emerging locally and nationally and the new ideas forming within our benefice as we prepare the church while working towards greater outreach into our communities and beyond. God of mission, who alone brings growth to your church, send your Holy Spirit to give vision to our planning, wisdom to our actions and power to our witness. Help our church to grow in numbers, in spiritual commitment to you 
and in service to our community. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Merciful Father, we accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty Father, who in your great mercy gladdened the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord, give us such knowledge of his presence with us that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen love and serve you continually in righteousness and truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. It's wonderful to be with you this evening and I wish you a very, very restful restful night tonight and uh, and a wonderful week ahead we look forward to being with you again very soon god bless <laughs>